So a couple people are wanting to understand more about my jaw. <laughs> what the hell's going on? And it's easier for me to make a video. So I was diagnosed with upper airway resistance syndrome. Um, I've basically had it since birth. It's not what it sounds like, not breathing fully. <clears throat> and I had to go through a couple of different steps to get to where I'm at in the process. An ENT surgeon did a sleep study on me. And although I don't have sleep apnea, my oxygen rates were going down up to 20% at times throughout the night. So it was obvious that I wasn't breathing. <clears throat> and the next thing that they had to do was a sleep endoscopy. So they put me under and stuck a camera down my throat. And what they found was that 80% of my epiglottis, which is regulating breathing versus eating, had been blocked. Uh, no, 80% of my epiglottis was removed. <laughs> that thing was way too big. And one of the first signs was that my throat, uh, my jaw, my mouth, it was, it's all very small. It's actually a problem that is a lot more widespread than people realize. We're all getting a little bit more narrow and even dietary choices um, over time have, have impacted it. So from there, basically my surgery was in April, 2018. I'm almost fully healed. For a normal person, it takes six months. I'm still having some issues, but things have improved greatly. And once my growth appliance, FAGA, Fixed Anterior Growth Guidance Appliance, is done, then I'll go back to the ENT surgeon and talk about um, if we need to fix my deviated septum which is why I wear this nasal dilator. It's really helping. That's why I just uh, have no more ego and wear it during the day too, <laughs> not just at night. And um, a prolapsed tongue. So beyond the epiglottis, we realize that there's an obstruction in my nose. And then when I'm sleeping at night, my tongue is still falling back. However, those are, th those are things that might not need to be addressed once my jaw has finally finished growing. So my jaw is growing out this way and my palate is also expanding up. So there's going to be more room for my tongue. And what this means basically is that I have never really had full breaths my whole life. I was sick a lot as a baby, but they were just misdiagnosed as ear infections and um, sinus infections. But now they're at a place where this technology has been invented and it's being fixed in babies, thank God. Um, somehow I was able to overcompensate for it, but a lot of children even have uh, developmental issues like in special education classes and stuff and once they grow their jaw that's the need for that is essentially removed it's pretty amazing so I found a team it's the ENT surgeon it's the dental uh, dentist that's doing my faga in order to diagnose it, he uses a special uh, CT scan. It's not the same CT scan that you get at the hospital. 
And what he found was a normal draw is supposed to be like this, and mine was sort of like a hockey stick. <clears throat> so that's, that's what we're working on doing now. That's why I have all of these wires in my mouth. And, and what else about that? It just lost my mind. Maybe I'll remember later. So the next part of this is myofascial urology. That's basically a physical therapist for your throat and your mouth. <clears throat> I'm doing about 11 exercises per day, trying to strengthen these different kinds of muscles. And also what we're doing probably within the next few months is using a laser to cut that tongue tie. That's what it's called if you have this string underneath your tongue. It's not supposed to be there. <laughs> Go figure. So, so with all of this going on, I've noticed a huge change in how I'm breathing. When I was in Asia, knowing that I was sick, not feeling right, but having all of these doctors telling me that nothing was wrong, I was at the point where I couldn't even scuba dive. I was on this little island called Gili Menno, and they had some of the best snorkeling, and they had these amazing turtles not so far off the shore. And I just couldn't do it. It didn't make any sense. I couldn't hold my breath. It felt like I was choking. Randomly, I would have these attacks of not being able to breathe, and that's essentially all gone away. So we still are, where's the holes? Here and here. All of these teeth still have to move. Um, a lot of my teeth have to rotate. And then my jaw will be an L again. So what these doctors have found is that some people diagnosed with things like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, hypothyroidism, all of these different kinds of things, um, their symptoms have greatly improved with, with these changes. And I'm an example of that. I haven't started doing cartwheels yet. <laughs> I'm still using a wheelchair to get out of the house and um, a cane, walking sticks, things like that. But I have a lot of hope that these are going to be some of the main reasons why I will return to health. I've included the websites. Um, my ENT surgeon is at Montefiore in Queens, Dr. Stephen Park. My dental surgeon is uh, in Stamford, Connecticut, Dr. Lenny Kundel. I'm in New York and I'm pretty sure the next person that would be, the next closest person that would be able to perform this is in Kentucky or Kansas. I want to say Kansas. And then my myofascial urologist is Paula Fabi. She actually can do Skype appointments, so you don't need to physically be near her. But funny enough, she is one of my parents' friends and lives in the same town that I do. She was the one who took me through a whole list of questions um, about being a preemie, about the, the kinds of problems or challenges that I had growing up. And she could tell just from that, from the way that my face looked, that I needed to see these two other doctors. If you have any questions, please let me know, and better yet, contact those doctors. <laughs> and if I think of anything else to add to the video, then I'll just leave it in the comments. Instagram is so hard of a video, so you just have to deal with searching for it. Okay. See you later, guys.